Multiple citizenship, dual citizenship, multiple nationality, or dual nationality is a person's citizenship status, in which a person is concurrently regarded as a citizen of more than one state under the laws of those states. There is no international convention which determines the nationality or citizen status of a person. Citizenship status is defined exclusively by national laws, which can vary and can conflict. Multiple citizenship arises because different countries use different, and not necessarily mutually exclusive, criteria for citizenship. Colloquial speech refers to people holding multiple citizenship, but technically each nation makes a claim that a particular person is considered its national. Some countries do not permit dual citizenship. This may be by requiring an applicant for naturalization to renounce all existing citizenship, or by withdrawing its citizenship from someone who voluntarily acquires another citizenship, or by other devices. Some countries do not permit a renunciation of citizenship. Some countries permit a general dual citizenship while others permit dual citizenship but only of a limited number of countries. Most countries that permit dual citizenship still may not recognize the other citizenship of its nationals within its own territory, for example, in relation to entry into the country, national service, duty to vote, etc. Similarly, it may not permit consular access by another country for a person who is also its national. Some countries prohibit dual citizenship holders from serving in their militaries or on police forces or holding certain public offices. History Up until the late 19th century, nations often decided whom they claimed as their citizens or subjects, and did not recognize any other nationalities they held. Many states did not recognize the right of their citizens to renounce their citizenship without permission, due to policies that originated with the feudal theory of perpetual allegiance to the sovereign. This meant that people could hold multiple citizenships, with none of their nations recognizing any other of their citizenships. Until the early modern era, when levels of migration were insignificant, this was not a serious issue. However, when non-trivial levels of migration began, this state of affairs sometimes led to international incidents, with countries of origin refusing to recognize the new nationalities of natives who had migrated, and when possible, conscripting natives who had naturalized as citizens of another country into military service. The most notable example was the War of 1812, triggered by British impressment of American seamen who were alleged to be British subjects into naval service. In the aftermath of the 1867 Fenian Rising, Irish Americans who had gone to Ireland to participate in the uprising and were caught were charged with treason, as the British authorities considered them to be British subjects. This outraged many Irish Americans, to which the British responded by pointing out that, just like British law, American law also recognized perpetual allegiance. As a result, Congress passed the Expatriation Act of 1868, which granted Americans the right to freely renounce their U.S. citizenship. Britain followed suit with a similar law, and years later, signed a treaty agreeing to treat British subjects who had become U.S. citizens as no longer holding British nationality. During this time, diplomatic incidents had also arisen between the United States and several other European countries over their tendency to conscript naturalized American citizens visiting their former homelands. In response, the U.S. government negotiated agreements with various European states known as the Bancroft Treaties, under which the signatories pledged to treat the voluntary naturalization of a former citizen or national with another sovereign nation as a renunciation of their citizenship. As a result, the theory of perpetual allegiance largely fell out of favor with governments during the late 19th century. With the consensus of the time being that dual citizenship would only lead to diplomatic problems, more governments began prohibiting it, and revoking the nationality of citizens holding another nationality. By the mid-20th century, dual nationality was largely prohibited worldwide, although there were exceptions. For example, a series of U.S. Supreme Court rulings permitted Americans born with citizenship in another country to keep it without losing their U.S. citizenship. At the 1930 League of Nations Codification Conference, an attempt was made to codify nationality rules into a universal worldwide treaty, the 1930 Hague Convention, whose chief aims would be to completely abolish both statelessness and dual citizenship. It proposed laws that would have reduced both, but in the end was ratified by only 20 nations. However, the consensus against dual nationality began to erode due to changes in social mores and attitudes. By the late 20th century it was becoming gradually accepted again. Many states were lifting restrictions on dual citizenship. 
For example, the British Nationality Act 1948 removed restrictions on dual citizenship in the United Kingdom. The 1967 Afroyum v. Rusk ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court prohibited the U.S. government from involuntarily stripping citizenship from Americans over dual citizenship, and the Canadian Citizenship Act, 1976, removed restrictions on dual citizenship in Canada. The number of states allowing multiple citizenship further increased after a treaty in Europe requiring signatories to limit dual citizenship lapsed in the 1990s, and countries with high emigration rates began permitting it to maintain links with their respective diasporas. Topic. Citizenship of multiple countries The rights of citizenship are determined by each country, which sets its own criteria for citizenship. These criteria change from time to time, often becoming more restrictive. For example, until 1982 a person born in the UK was automatically a British citizen, this was subjected to restrictions from 1983. These laws may create situations where a person may satisfy the citizenship requirements of more than one country simultaneously. This would, in the absence of laws of one country or the other, allow the person to hold multiple citizenship. National laws may include criteria as to the circumstances, if any, in which a person may concurrently hold another citizenship. A country may withdraw its own citizenship if a person acquires a citizenship of another country, for example, Citizenship by descent Historically, citizenship was traced through the father, but today most countries permit the tracing through either parent, and some also through a grandparent. Today, the citizenship laws of most countries are based on jus sanguinis. In many cases, this basis for citizenship also extends to children born outside the country, and sometimes even when the parent has lost citizenship. Citizenship by birth on the country's territory the United States, Canada, and many Latin American countries grant unconditional birthright citizenship. To stop birth tourism, most countries have abolished it, while Australia, France, Germany, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, and the United Kingdom have a modified jus soli, which requires at least one parent to be a citizen of the country or a legal permanent resident who has lived in the country for several years. In the majority of such countries, for example, in Canada, children born to diplomats and under people outside the jurisdiction of the soil are not granted citizenship at birth. It is usually conferred automatically on the children once one of the parents obtains citizenship. Citizenship by marriage jury matrimony. Some countries routinely give citizenship to spouses of its citizens, or may shorten the time for naturalization, but only in a few countries is citizenship granted on the wedding day e.g., Iran. Some countries have regulations against so-called sham marriages e.g., the United States, and some revoke the spouse's citizenship if the marriage terminates within a specified time e.g., Algeria. Citizenship by naturalization. Citizenship by adoption. A minor adopted from another country when at least one adoptive parent is a citizen. Citizenship by investment. Some countries give citizenship to people who make a substantial monetary investment in their country. There are three countries in Europe where this is possible and several in the Caribbean, including Antigua and Barbuda, Austria, Cyprus, Grenada, Dominica, Malta, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Lucia. These countries all grant citizenship immediately given due diligence is passed, without a requirement for any physical presence in the country. In Asia, Cambodia has laws enacted that allow foreigners to obtain citizenship through investment, but it is difficult to receive without fluency in Khmer. Some countries grant citizenship based on ethnicity and on religion. Israel gives all Jews the right to immigrate to Israel, by the law of return, and fast tracked citizenship. Dual citizenship is permitted, but when entering the country, the Israeli passport must be used. Citizenship by holding an office. In the case of Vatican City, citizenship is based on holding an office, with Vatican citizenship held by the Pope, cardinals residing in Vatican City, active members of the Holy See's diplomatic service, and other directors of Vatican offices and services. Vatican citizenship is lost when the office term comes to an end, and children cannot inherit it from their parents. Since Vatican citizenship is time-limited, dual citizenship is allowed, and persons who would become stateless because of loss of Vatican citizenship automatically become Italian citizens. Once a country bestows citizenship, it may or may not consider a voluntary renunciation of that citizenship to be valid. 
In the case of naturalization, some countries require applicants for naturalization to renounce their former citizenship. For example, the United States Chief Justice John Rutledge ruled a man may, at the same time, enjoy the rights of citizenship under two governments, but the United States requires applicants for naturalization to swear to an oath renouncing all prior allegiance and fidelity to any other nation or sovereignty as part of the naturalization ceremony. However, some countries do not recognize one of its citizens renouncing its citizenship. Effectively, the person in question may still possess both citizenships, notwithstanding the technical fact that he or she may have explicitly renounced one of the country's citizenships before officials of the other. For example, the United Kingdom recognizes a renunciation of citizenship only if it is done with competent UK authorities. Consequently, British citizens naturalized in the United States remain British citizens in the eyes of the British government even after they renounce British allegiance to the satisfaction of United States authorities. Irish nationality law applies to the island of Ireland, which extends citizenship to Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. Therefore, anyone born in Northern Ireland who meets the requirements for being an Irish citizen through birth on the island of Ireland or a child born outside Ireland but with a qualifying parent can exercise rights accorded only to Irish citizens, including that of travelling under an Irish passport. Under Irish law, even if such a person has not acted in this way does not necessarily mean that they are not entitled to Irish citizenship. See Irish nationality law and British nationality law. People born in Northern Ireland are also British citizens on the same basis as people born elsewhere in the UK. People born in Northern Ireland may generally choose to hold a British passport, an Irish passport, or both. Topic: <inaudible> Multiple citizenship avoided. Some countries consider multiple citizenship undesirable and take measures to avoid it. Since a country has control only over who has its citizenship, but has no control over who has any other country's citizenship, the only way for a country to avoid multiple citizenship is to deny its citizenship to people in cases when they would have another citizenship. This may take the following forms. Automatic loss of citizenship if another citizenship is acquired voluntarily, such as Austria, Azerbaijan, China excluding Hong Kong and Macau, which allows multiple citizenship in parallel with Chinese citizenship at the expense of losing consular protection from the country involved in Hong Kong, Macau and China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Kazakhstan, Nepal, the Netherlands unless certain conditions are met, Norway, and Singapore. Saudi Arabian citizenship may be withdrawn if a Saudi citizen obtains a foreign citizenship without the permission of the Prime Minister who is also the King. Possible but not automatic loss of citizenship if another citizenship is acquired voluntarily, such as South Africa. Possible but not automatic loss of citizenship if people with multiple citizenships do not renounce their other citizenships after reaching the age of majority or within a certain period of time after obtaining multiple citizenships, such as Japan and Montenegro. In Montenegro loss is automatic with some exceptions. Denying automatic citizenship from birth if the child may acquire another citizenship automatically at birth. Requiring an applicant for naturalization to apply to renounce his, her existing citizenships, and provide proof from those countries that they have renounced citizenship, as a condition of naturalization. Involuntary multiple citizenship Involuntary multiple citizenship can happen in the following ways. If the parents of a child have different citizenships or are multiple citizens themselves, the child may gain multiple citizenship depending on whether and how jus soli and jus sanguinis apply for each citizenship. Some countries e.g., Canada, the United States of America and many other countries in the Americas regard all children born there automatically to be eligible to be citizens jus soli even if the parents are not legally present. For example, a child born in the United States to Norwegian parents automatically has dual citizenship with the United States and Norway, even though Norway usually restricts or forbids dual citizenship. There are exceptions, such as the child of a foreign diplomat living in the United States. Such a child would be eligible to become a lawful permanent resident, but not a citizen based on the U.S. birth. This has led to birth tourism, so some countries have abolished jus soli or restricted it i.e., at least one parent must be a citizen or a legal, permanent resident who has lived in the country for several years. Some countries forbid their citizens to renounce their citizenship or try to discourage them from doing so. 
Policy changes may also render people to have multiple citizenship involuntarily, for example, when the sovereignty of a place is changed, the new country may declare the people on it to be citizens of the country. Topic. Complex laws on dual citizenship Some countries do not simply allow or forbid dual or multiple citizenship in general, but have more complex rules, such as Some countries allow dual citizenship, but restrict the rights of dual citizens In Egypt dual citizens cannot be elected to parliament In Armenia dual citizens cannot vote or be elected to parliament in Israel, members of parliament must renounce any other citizenship before taking their seat in the Knesset. In Australia, dual citizens are ineligible to be elected to the federal parliament. In the 2017-18 Australian parliamentary eligibility crisis, 15 members of parliament were found to have been ineligible for election due to holding dual citizenship, although most had not been aware of the fact. In New Zealand, dual citizens may be elected to Parliament, but MPs once elected may not voluntarily become a citizen of another country, or take any act to have their foreign nationality recognised such as applying for a foreign passport. However, the only person to recently violate this, Harry Denhoven, was protected by the passage of retroactive law. In the Philippines, dual citizens may not run for any local elective office. In the independent states of the Commonwealth Caribbean, nationals of any Commonwealth country who meet local residency requirements are eligible to vote in elections and run for parliament, with one complicated caveat. Each of those countries has a provision barring anyone who is by virtue of his own act, under any acknowledgement of allegiance, obedience or adherence to a foreign power or state. To quote a representative provision from the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines from becoming a member of parliament. The precise meaning of those provisions is disputed, and is the subject of separate ongoing legal disputes in the countries. Germany and Austria for the most part do not permit dual citizenship except for persons who obtain more than one citizenship at the time of birth. Germans and Austrians can apply for special permission to keep their citizenship before taking a second one for example, both Austria and the United States consider Arnold Schwarzenegger a citizen. In general, however, any Austrian who takes up a second citizenship will automatically lose Austrian citizenship. Since August 2007, Germany has recognized dual citizenship if the other citizenship is either one of an EU member country or a Swiss citizenship so that a permission is not required any more in these cases, and in some exceptional cases, non-EU and non-Swiss citizens can keep their old citizenship when they become citizens of Germany. For more details, see German nationality law dual citizenship. Due to changes of the German law on dual citizenship, children of non-EU legal permanent residents can have dual citizenship if born and grown up in Germany the foreign-born parents usually cannot have dual citizenship themselves. Acquisition of the nationality of Andorra, Portugal, the Philippines, Equatorial Guinea or Ibero-American countries, is not sufficient to cause the loss of Spanish nationality by birth. Spain has dual citizenship treaties with Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Paraguay, Peru, Puerto Rico and Venezuela. Spaniards residing in these countries or territories do not lose their rights as Spaniards if they adopt that nationality. For all other countries, Spanish citizenship is lost three years after the acquisition of the foreign citizenship unless the individual declares officially their will to retain Spanish citizenship Spanish nationality law. Upon request Spain has allowed persons from Puerto Rico to acquire Spanish citizenship. On the other hand, foreign nationals who acquire Spanish nationality must relinquish their previous nationality, unless they are natural-born citizens of an Ibero-American country, Andorra, the Philippines, Equatorial Guinea or Portugal even if these countries do not grant their citizens a similar treatment, or Sephardi Jews. See also the section on dormant citizenship. Prior to 2011, South Korea did not permit dual citizenship after the age of 21. Now a limited number of persons can have it. For details, see South Korean nationality law hashtag dual citizenship. Like Germans and Austrians, citizens of South Africa must apply for permission to keep their citizenship when acquiring the citizenship of another country. 
The Turkish government requires that Turkish citizens who apply for another nationality inform the appropriate Turkish officials the nearest Turkish embassy or consulate abroad and provide the original naturalization certificate, Turkish birth certificate, document showing completion of military service for males, marriage certificate if applicable and four photographs. Dual nationals are not compelled to use a Turkish passport to enter and leave Turkey, it is permitted to travel with a valid foreign passport and the Turkish national ID card. Pakistan allows dual citizenship with only 19 countries, Australia, Belgium, Bahrain, Canada, Denmark, Egypt, Finland, France, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Jordan, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Sweden, Switzerland, Syria, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Topic. Partial citizenship, and residency Many countries allow foreigners or former citizens to live and work indefinitely there. However, for voting, being voted and working for the public sector or the national security in a country, citizenship of the country concerned is almost always required. Since 2008, Poland has granted the Polish card. Karta Polaka to ethnic Poles who are citizens of the successor states of the former Soviet Union and can prove they have Polish ancestors and knowledge of the Polish language and declare their Polish ethnicity in written form. Holders of the card are not regarded as citizens, but enjoy some privileges other foreigners do not, e.g. entry visa, right to work, education, or healthcare in Poland. As stated above, Poland currently has no specific laws on dual citizenship. A second citizenship is tolerated, but not recognized. Turkey allows its citizens to have dual citizenship if they inform the authorities before acquiring the second citizenship see above, and former Turkish citizens who have given up their Turkish citizenship for example, because they have naturalized in a country that usually does not permit dual citizenship, such as Germany, Austria or the Netherlands can apply for the blue card, Mavi card, which gives them some citizens' rights back, e.g. The right to live and work in Turkey, the right to possess land or the right to inherit, but not, for example, the right to vote. Overseas citizenship of India, the constitution of India does not permit dual citizenship or dual nationality, except for minors where the second nationality was involuntarily acquired. Indian authorities interpreted this to mean a person cannot have another country's passport while simultaneously holding an Indian one, even for a child claimed by another country as its citizen, who may be required by the laws of this country to use the corresponding passports for foreign travel such as a child born in the United States to Indian parents. Indian courts have given the executive branch wide discretion over this matter. In 2005, India amended the 1955 Citizenship Act to introduce a form of overseas citizenship, which stops just short of full dual citizenship and is, in all aspects, like permanent residency. Such overseas citizens are exempt from the rule forbidding dual citizenship, they may not vote, run for office, join the army, or take up government posts, though these evolving principles are subject to revolving political discretions for those born in India with birthrights. Moreover, people who have acquired citizenship in Pakistan or Bangladesh are not eligible for overseas citizenship. Many countries e.g. United States, Canada, all EU countries and Switzerland, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore issue permanent residency status to foreigners deemed eligible. This status generally authorizes a person to live and work in the issuing country indefinitely. There is no right to vote in the host country, and there may be other restrictions no consular protection and rights not subject to military conscription. Permanent residents may usually apply for citizenship after several years of residency. Depending both on the home country and the guest country, dual citizenship may or may not be permitted. For more details, see permanent residency. Some countries have concluded treaties regulating travel and access to employment. A citizen of an EU country can live and work indefinitely in other EU countries and the four EFTA countries, and citizens of the EFTA countries can live and work in EU countries. Such EU citizens can vote in EU, but not national or local, elections. The Trans-Tasman travel arrangement between Australia and New Zealand allows their citizens to live and work in the other country. A citizen of a GCC member state Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates can live and work in other member states, but dual citizenship even with another GCC state is not allowed. Indian citizens do not need a visa to travel to and work in Nepal or Bhutan and vice versa, but none of the three countries allow dual citizenship. 
multiple citizenship not recognized saying that a country does not recognize multiple citizenship is a confusing and ambiguous term often it is simply a restatement of the master nationality rule whereby a country treats a person who is a citizen of both that country and another in the same way as one who is a citizen only of the country in other words the country does not recognize that the person has any other citizenship for the purposes of the country's laws. In particular, citizens of a country may not be permitted to use another country's passport or travel documents to enter or leave the country. Topic. Dormant citizenship and right of return The concept of a dormant citizenship means that a person has the citizenships of two countries, but as long as while living permanently in one country, their status and citizens' rights in the other country are inactive. They will be reactivated when they move back to live permanently in the other country. This means, in spite of dual citizenship, only one citizenship can be exercised at a time. The dormant citizenship Exists for example in Spain, Spanish citizens who have naturalized in an Ibero-American country and have kept their Spanish citizenship are dual citizens, but have lost many of the rights of Spanish citizens resident in Spain, and hence the EU, until they move back to Spain. Some countries offer former citizens or citizens of former colonies of the country a simplified re naturalization process. Depending on the laws of the two countries in question, dual citizenship may or may not be allowed. For details, see Right of Return. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Multiple citizenship encouraged. Some countries are more open to multiple citizenship than others, as it may help citizens travel and conduct business overseas. Countries that have taken active steps towards permitting multiple citizenship in recent years include Switzerland since January 1, 1992, and Australia since April 4, 2002. Today, most advanced economies allow dual citizenship. Notable exceptions which restrict or forbid it are Austria, Germany, Japan, the Netherlands, Norway, Singapore, and Spain. Of the newly industrialized countries, Brazil, Mexico, the Philippines, South Africa with prior permission, Thailand, and Turkey with prior permission allow dual citizenship, while China although permanent residents of Hong Kong and Macau may concurrently hold foreign passports, India, and Malaysia forbid it but all Malaysian and Indian citizens are Commonwealth citizens and are entitled to certain rights in the UK and other Commonwealth countries. Indian citizens may also be regarded as SAARC citizens for some purposes, for example in in receiving preferential treatment in obtaining Sri Lankan visas, India allows overseas citizenship, see above. Indonesia allows dual citizenship only until the age of 18 years. In former times, some countries, Latin American countries and Canada, advertised their policy of unconditional birthright citizenship to become more attractive for immigrants. Despite wide acceptance of dual citizenship, industrialized countries now try to protect themselves from birth tourism and uncontrollable immigration waves, so only Canada and the United States still grant unconditional birthright citizenship even for children of illegal immigrants. In both countries, there have been calls to change the laws, but, so far, they have not been successful. Brazil has similar policies. The only people born in Brazil who do not automatically acquire Brazilian citizenship are those whose parents are residing in Brazil while serving their own countries as diplomats, military attaches, cultural attaches and the like. In Australia, France, Germany, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, and the UK, a child born there is regarded as a citizen only if at least one parent is either a citizen or a legal permanent resident who has lived there for several years. Germany usually restricts dual citizenship so non-EU, non-Swiss citizens born and grown up abroad must usually renounce their old citizenship when naturalizing. Some countries e Liechtenstein, allow only citizens by descent to have dual citizenship, but require naturalized citizens to renounce their old citizenship. <laughs> Subnational citizenship Under the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution, all persons born or naturalized in the United States, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they are deemed to reside. Certain rights accrue as an incident of state citizenship and access to federal courts can sometimes be determined on state citizenship. 
In addition, tribal sovereignty affords members, citizens, of federally recognized tribes, nations, a status comparable to local citizenship. Switzerland has a three-tier system of citizenship, confederation, canton and commune municipality. Although considered part of the United Kingdom for British nationality purposes, the Crown dependencies of Jersey, Guernsey and the Isle of Man have local legislation restricting certain employment and housing rights to those with local status. Although the British citizenship of people from these islands gives them full citizenship rights when in the United Kingdom, it does not give them the rights that British citizenship generally confers when in other parts of the European Union for example, the right to reside and work. In a similar way, a number of British overseas territories have a concept of belonger status for their citizens, in addition to their existing British citizenship. Citizens of the People's Republic of China may be permanent residents of the Hong Kong or Macau Special Administrative Regions, or have household registration Huko, somewhere in mainland China. School enrollment, work permission, and other civic rights and privileges such as whether one may apply for a Hong Kong SAR passport, Macau SAR passport, or People's Republic of China passport are tied to the region in which the citizen has permanent residence or household registration. Although within mainland China the Hukou system has loosened in recent years, movement between Macau, Hong Kong, and the mainland remains controlled. Mainland Chinese who migrate to Hong Kong on one-way permits have their mainland Hukou cancelled, while children born in Hong Kong to visiting mainland parents cannot receive mainland Hukou unless they cancel their Hong Kong permanent residence status. People from Aland have joint regional Aland and national Finnish citizenship. People with Alandic citizenship have the right to buy property and set up a business on Aland, but Finns without regional citizenship cannot. Finns can get Alandic citizenship after living on the islands for five years, and Alanders lose their regional citizenship after living on the Finnish mainland for five years. The regional government of Puerto Rico began issuing Puerto Rican citizenship certificates in September 2007 after Juan Mari Braz, a lifelong supporter of independence, won a successful court victory that validated his claim that Puerto Rican citizenship was valid and can be claimed by anyone born on the island or with at least one parent who was born there. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, citizens hold also citizenship of their respective entity, generally that in which they reside. This citizenship can be of the Republika Srpska or of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. One cannot hold both entity citizenships simultaneously. In Malaysia, a federation of 13 states, each state gives certain benefits such as baby bonus, education loans and scholarships to children born in the state or born to parents who were born in the state and or residing in the state. The states of Sabah and Sarawak in East Malaysia each has its own immigration control and permanent residency system. Citizens from peninsular Malaysian states are subject to immigration control in the two states. Topic: <laughs> Former instances. The use of internal passport to restrict residency and movement in the Soviet Union and in apartheid era South Africa had the effect of tying local citizens to their assigned administrative entity titular nations and Bantistans, respectively. Following the federalization of Czechoslovakia in 1968, Czechoslovak citizens also possessed an internal citizenship of either the Czech or Slovak Republic. Upon the nation's peaceful dissolution in 1993, this was used to determine whether they ought to receive Czech or Slovak citizenship. Before the breakup of Yugoslavia in 1991, Yugoslav citizens possessed an internal citizenship of their own republic Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Slovenia, Macedonia, Montenegro as well as Yugoslav citizenship. In Serbia and Montenegro, this system was in effect until 2006. When Singapore joined Malaysia in 1963, all Singapore citizens were granted Malaysian citizenship. Singapore's citizenship continued to exist as a subnational citizenship, and continued to be legislated by the Legislative Assembly of Singapore subject to the approval of the Parliament of Malaysia. Upon Singapore's independence from Malaysia in 1965, Malaysian citizenship was withdrawn from Singapore citizens, and all Singapore citizens became citizens of the new Republic of Singapore. Topic. Supranational citizenship. 
In European Union law, there is the concept of EU citizenship which flows from the Maastricht Treaty which created a legal identity for the European Community and granted citizenship to all current and future citizens of a member state. An EU citizen is free to live and to work in another EU country for an unlimited period of time, but member states may reserve the right to vote in national elections, stand for national election, become a public servant in highly sensitive ministries defense for example, etc. only for their citizens, and in highly limited circumstances, may deport or refuse entry to citizens of other EU states. An EU state may place restrictions on the free movement rights of citizens of newly admitted states for several years. Such provisions remain in force mostly for nationals of Croatia no later than 2020. In the past, and to a lesser extent, such provisions also affected Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Slovenia, Bulgaria and Romania. The United Kingdom recognizes a Commonwealth citizenship for the citizens of the member states of the Commonwealth of Nations. The United Kingdom allows non-nationals who are Commonwealth citizens to vote and stand for election while resident there, while most other Commonwealth countries make little or no distinction between citizens of other Commonwealth nations and citizens of non-Commonwealth nations. Commonwealth of Independent States nations the republics of the former Soviet Union are often eligible for fast-track processing to citizenships of other CIS countries, with varying degrees of recognition, tolerance of dual citizenship among the states. Effects and potential issues It is often observed that dual citizenship may strengthen ties between migrants and their countries of origin and increase their propensity to remit funds to their communities of origin. Qualitative research on the impact of dual citizenship on the remittances, diaspora investments, return migration, naturalization, and political behavior finds several ways in which multiple citizenship can affect these categories. As a bundle of rights, dual citizenship a enables dual citizens by granting special privileges, b affects their expectations about privileges in the decision-making process, and c eases the transaction process and reducing costs and risks, for example in the case of investing and conducting business. In addition, a dual legal status can have positive effects on diasporic identification and commitment to causes in the homeland, as well as to a higher naturalization rate of immigrants in their countries of residence. Topic. National cohesiveness Some have questioned whether allowing dual citizenship impedes cultural assimilation or social integration, increases disconnection from the political process, and degrades national or civic identity. Cohesiveness, the rise in tension between mainstream and migrant communities, is cited as evidence of the need to maintain a strong national identity and culture. They assert that the fact that a second citizenship can be obtained without giving anything up, such as the loss of public benefits, welfare, health care, retirement funds, and job opportunities in the country of origin in exchange for citizenship in a new country both trivializes what it means to be a citizen and nullifies the consequential, transformational, and psychological change that occurs in an individual when they go through the naturalization process. In effect, this approach argues, the self-centered taking of an additional citizenship contradicts what it means to be a citizen in that it becomes a convenient and painless means of attaining improved economic opportunity without any real consequences and can just as easily be discarded when it is no longer beneficial. Proponents argue that dual citizenship can actually encourage political activity providing an avenue for immigrants who are unwilling to forsake their country of origin either out of loyalty or due to a feeling of separation from the mainstream society because of language, culture, religion, or ethnicity. A 2007 academic study concluded that dual citizens had a negative effect on the assimilation and political connectedness of first generation Latino immigrants to the United States. 32% less likely to be fluent in English 18% less likely to identify as American 19% less likely to consider the U.S. as their homeland 18% less likely to express high levels of civic duty 9% less likely to register to vote 
15% less likely to have ever voted in a national election. The study also noted that although dual nationality is likely to disconnect immigrants from the American political system and impede assimilation, the initial signs suggest that these effects seem to be limited almost exclusively to the first generation, although it is mentioned that a full assessment of dual nationality beyond the first generation is not possible with present data. Concern over the effect of multiple citizenship on national cohesiveness is generally more acute in the United States. The reason for this is twofold. The United States is a civic nation and not an ethnic nation. American citizenship is not based on belonging to a particular ethnicity, but on political loyalty to American democracy and values. Regimes based on ethnicity, which support the doctrine of perpetual allegiance as one is always a member of the ethnic nation, are not concerned with assimilating non-ethnics since they can never become true citizens. In contrast, the essence of a civic nation makes it imperative that immigrants assimilate into the greater whole as there is not an ethnic cohesiveness uniting the populace. The United States is an immigrant nation. As immigration is primarily directed at family reunification and refugee status rather than education and job skills, the pool of candidates tends to be poorer, less educated, and consistently from less stable countries either non-democracies or fragile ones with less familiarity or understanding of American values, making their assimilation both more difficult and more important. The degree of angst over the effects of dual citizenship seemingly corresponds to a country's model for managing immigration and ethnic diversity. The differential exclusionary model, which accepts immigrants as temporary guest workers, but is highly restrictive with regard to other forms of immigration and to naturalization of immigrants. Many countries in Asia such as Japan, China, Taiwan, Singapore and the countries of the Middle East tend to follow this approach. The assimilationist model, which accepts that immigrants obtain citizenship, but on the condition that they give up some or all cultural, linguistic, or social characteristics that differ from those of the majority population. Europe is the primary example of this model, where immigrants are usually required to learn the official language, and cultural traditions such as Islamic dress are often barred in public spaces see immigration to Europe. The multicultural model, which grants immigrants access to citizenship and to equal rights without demanding that they give up cultural, linguistic, or intermarriage restrictions or otherwise pressure them to integrate or intermix with the mainstream population. Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United States have historically taken this approach, as exemplified by the fact that the United States has no official language, allowing official documents such as election ballots to be printed in a variety of languages. See immigration to the United States Topic. Appearance of foreign allegiance People with multiple citizenship may be viewed as having dual loyalty, having the potential to act contrary to a government's interests, and this may lead to difficulties in acquiring government employment where security clearance may be required. In the United States, dual citizenship is associated with two categories of security concerns, foreign influence and foreign preference. Contrary to common misconceptions, dual citizenship in itself is not the major problem in obtaining or retaining security clearance in the United States. As a matter of fact, if a security clearance applicant's dual citizenship is based solely on parents' citizenship or birth in a foreign country, that can be a mitigating condition. However, taking advantage of the entitlements of a non-U.S. citizenship can cause problems. For example, possession or use of a foreign passport is a condition disqualifying one from security clearance and is not mitigated by reasons of personal convenience, safety, requirements of foreign law, or the identity of the foreign country. As is explicitly clarified in a Department of Defense policy memorandum which defines a guideline requiring that any clearance be denied or revoked unless the applicant surrenders the foreign passport or obtains official permission for its use from the appropriate agency of the United States government. This guideline has been followed in administrative rulings by the United States Department of Defense DOD Defense Office of Hearings and Appeals DOHA Office of Industrial Security Clearance Review ISCR, which decides cases involving security clearances for contractor personnel doing classified work for all DOD components. 
In one such case, an administrative judge ruled that it is not clearly consistent with U.S. national interest to grant a request for a security clearance to an applicant who was a dual national of the U.S. and Ireland, despite the fact that it has with good relations with the U.S. In Israel, certain military units, including most recently the Israeli Navy's submarine fleet, as well as posts requiring high security clearances, require candidates to renounce any other citizenship before joining, though the number of units making such demands has declined. In many combat units, candidates are required to declare but not renounce any foreign citizenship. On the other hand, Israel may view some dual citizens as desirable candidates for its security services due to their ability to legitimately enter neighboring states which are closed to Israeli passport holders. The related case of Ben Zygier has caused debate about dual citizenship in Australia. Topic: <laughs> Multiple citizenship among politicians. This perception of dual loyalty can apply even when the job in question does not require security clearance. In the United States, dual citizenship is common among politicians or government employees. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger retained his Austrian citizenship during his service as a governor of California while U.S. Senator Ted Cruz renounced his Canadian citizenship birthright on May 14, 2014. In 1999, the U.S. Attorney General's office issued an official opinion that a statutory provision that required the Justice Department not to employ a non citizen of the United States did not bar it from employing dual citizens. In Germany, politicians can have dual citizenship. David McAllister, who holds British and German citizenship, was Minister-President of the State of Lower Saxony from July 1, 2010 to February 19, 2013. He was the first German Minister-President to hold dual citizenship. A small controversy arose in 2005 when Michael Jean was appointed the Governor-General of Canada official representative of the Queen. Although Jean no longer holds citizenship in her native Haiti, her marriage to French-born filmmaker Jean Daniel Lafond allowed her to obtain French citizenship several years before her appointment. Article 23-8 of the French Civil Code allows the French government to withdraw French nationality from French citizens holding government or military positions in other countries and Jean's appointment made her both de facto head of state and commander-in-chief of the Canadian forces. The French embassy released a statement that this law would not be enforced because the governor-general is essentially a ceremonial figurehead. Nevertheless, Jean renounced her French citizenship two days before taking up office to end the controversy about it. However, former Canadian Prime Minister John Turner was born in the United Kingdom and still retains his dual citizenship. Stéphane Dion, former head of the Liberal Party of Canada and the previous leader of the official opposition, holds dual citizenship with France as a result of his mother's nationality. Dion nonetheless indicated a willingness to renounce French citizenship if a significant number of Canadians viewed it negatively. Thomas Mulcair, leader of the New Democratic Party and former leader of official opposition in the Canadian House of Commons, also holds dual citizenship with France. In Egypt, dual citizens cannot be elected to Parliament. The Constitution of Australia, in section 44, I, explicitly forbids people who hold allegiance to foreign powers from sitting in the Parliament of Australia. This restriction on people with dual or multiple citizenship being members of Parliament does not apply to the state parliaments, and the regulations vary by state. A court case see Sue v. Hill determined that the UK is a foreign power for purposes of this section of the Constitution, despite Australia holding a common nationality with it at the time that the Constitution was written, and that Senator-elect Heather Hill had not been duly elected to the national parliament because at the time of her election she was a subject or citizen of a foreign power. However, the High Court of Australia also ruled that dual citizenship on its own would not be enough to disqualify someone from validly sitting in parliament. The individual circumstances of the non-Australian citizenship must be looked at although the person must make a reasonable effort to renounce his or her non-Australian citizenship. However, if that other citizenship cannot be reasonably revoked for example, if it is impossible under the laws of the other country or impossible in practice because it requires an extremely difficult revocation process, then that person will not be disqualified from sitting in Parliament. In the 2017 Australian parliamentary eligibility crisis, the High Court disqualified Australia's Deputy Prime Minister and four senators because they held dual citizenship, despite being unaware of their citizenship status when elected. In New Zealand, controversy arose in 2003 when Labour MP Harry Denhoven applied to renew his citizenship of the Netherlands. 
Den Hoven, the New Zealand-born son of a Dutch-born father, had possessed dual citizenship from birth but had temporarily lost his Dutch citizenship due to a 1995 change in Dutch law regarding non-residents. While New Zealand's Electoral Act allowed candidates with dual citizenship to be elected as MPs, Section 55 of the Act stated that an MP who applied for citizenship of a foreign power after taking office would forfeit his, her seat. This was regarded by many as a technicality, however, and Den Hoven, with his large electoral majority, was almost certain to re-enter Parliament in the event of a by-election. As such, the Labour government retrospectively amended the Act, thus enabling Den Hoven to retain his seat. The amendment, nicknamed, Harry's Law, was passed by a majority of 61 votes to 56. The revised Act allows exceptions to Section 55 on the grounds of an MP's country, place of birth, descent, or renewing a foreign passport issued before the MP took office. Both the former Estonian President Tumas Hendrik Ilves and the former Lithuanian President Valdis Adamkus had been naturalized U.S. citizens prior to assuming their offices. Both have renounced their U.S. citizenships, Ilvis in 1993 and Adamkus in 1998. This was necessary because neither individual's new country permits retention of a former citizenship. Adamkus was a high-ranking official in the Environmental Protection Agency, a federal government department, during his time in the United States. Former Latvian President Vyra Vyk Freiberga relinquished Canadian citizenship upon taking office in 1999. Topic. Taxation In some cases, multiple citizenship can create additional tax liability. Most countries that impose tax normally base tax liability on source or residency. Some countries tax their non-resident citizens on foreign income, examples include the United States and Eritrea. Residency, a country may tax the income of anyone who lives there, regardless of citizenship or whether the income was earned in that country or abroad most common system. Source, a country may tax any income generated there, regardless of whether the earner is a citizen, resident, or non-resident, or Citizenship, a country may tax the worldwide income of its citizens, regardless of whether they reside in that country or whether the income was sourced there as of 2012, only the United States and Eritrea. A few other countries tax based on citizenship in limited situations, Finland, France, Hungary, Italy, and Spain. U.S. persons living outside of the United States are still subject to tax on all of their worldwide income, although U.S. law provides measures to reduce or eliminate double taxation issues for some. It has been reported that some U.S. citizens have relinquished U.S. citizenship in order to avoid possible taxes, the expense and complexity of compliance, or because they have been deemed unacceptable to financial institutions in the wake of FATCA. A person with multiple citizenship may have a tax liability to his country of residence and also to one or more of his countries of citizenship, or worse, if unaware that one of his citizenships created a tax liability, that country may consider the person to be a tax evader. Many countries and territories have contracted tax treaties or agreements for avoiding double taxation. Still, there are cases in which a person with multiple citizenship will owe tax solely on the basis of holding one such citizenship, for example, consider a person who holds both Australian and United States citizenship, lives and works in Australia. He would be subject to Australian taxation, because Australia taxes its residents, and he would be subject to U.S. taxation because he holds U.S. citizenship. In general, he would be allowed to subtract the Australian income tax he paid from the U.S. tax that would be due. Plus, the U.S. will allow some parts of foreign income to be exempt from taxation. For instance, in 2006 the foreign earned income exclusion allowed up to $82,400 of foreign salaried income to be exempt from income tax in 2014. This has now increased to $97,600. This exemption, plus the credit for foreign taxes paid mentioned above, often results in no U.S. taxes being owed, although a U.S. tax return would still have to be filed. In instances where the Australian tax was less than the U.S. tax, and if there was income that could not be exempted from U.S. tax, the U.S. would expect any tax due to be paid. The United States Internal Revenue Service has excluded some regulations such as Alternative Minimum Tax AMT, from tax treaties that protect double taxation. In its current format even if U.S. citizens are paying income taxes at a rate of 56%, far above the maximum U.S. marginal tax rate, the citizen can be subject to U.S. taxes because the calculation of the alternative minimum tax does not allow full deduction for taxes paid to a foreign country. 
Other regulations such as the post date of foreign mailed tax returns are not recognized and can result in penalties for late filing if they arrive at the IRS later than the filing date. However, the filing date for overseas citizens has a two-month automatic extension to June 15. If you are a U.S. citizen or resident alien residing overseas, or are in the military on duty outside the U.S., on the regular due date of your return, you are allowed an automatic two-month extension to file your return and pay any amount due without requesting an extension. For a calendar year return, the automatic two-month extension is to June 15. If you are unable to file your return by the automatic two-month extension date, you can request an additional extension to October 15 by filing Form 4868 before the automatic two-month extension date. However, any tax due payments made after June 15 will be subject to both interest charges and failure to pay penalties. IRS, 2012 Topic. Issues with international travel Many countries, even those that permit multiple citizenship, do not explicitly recognize multiple citizenship under their laws. Individuals are treated either as citizens of that country or not, and their citizenship with respect to other countries is considered to have no bearing. This can mean in Iran, Mexico, many Arab countries, and former Soviet republics that consular officials abroad may not have access to their citizens if they also hold local citizenship. Some countries provide access for consular officials as a matter of courtesy, but do not accept any obligation to do so under international consular agreements. The right of countries to act in this fashion is protected via the master nationality rule. Multiple citizens who travel to a country that claims them as a citizen may be required to enter or leave the country on that country's passport. For example, a United States Department of State web page on dual nationality contains the information that most U.S. citizens, including dual nationals, must use a U.S. passport to enter and leave the United States. Under the terms of the South African Citizenship Act, it is an offense for someone aged at least 18 with South African citizenship and another citizenship to enter or depart the Republic of South Africa using the passport of another country. They may also be required, before leaving the country, to fulfill requirements ordinarily required of its resident citizens, including compulsory military service or exit permits, in accordance with the proposed European Travel Information and Authorization System that is expected to enter into operation on 1 January 2020. The EU citizens who have multiple nationalities will be obliged to use the passport issued by an EU member state for entering the Schengen area. Topic. Military service Military service for dual nationals can be an issue of concern. Several countries have entered into a protocol relating to military obligations in certain cases of double nationality established at The Hague, 12 April 1930. The protocol states a person possessing two or more nationalities who habitually resides in one of the countries whose nationality he possesses, and who is in fact most closely connected with that country, shall be exempt from all military obligations in the other country or countries. This exemption may involve the loss of the nationality of the other country or countries." The protocol has several provisions. Healthcare. While the right to healthcare in countries with a public health service is often discussed in relation to immigration, it is a non-issue as far as nationality is concerned. The right to use public health services is determined by legal residency rather than nationality. For example, anyone legally resident and employed in the UK is entitled to use the National Health Service. Non-resident British citizens visiting Britain do not have this right. Topic Dominant and effective nationality The potential issues that dual nationality can pose in international affairs has long been recognized, and as a result, international law recognizes the concept of dominant and effective nationality, under which a dual national will hold only one dominant and effective nationality for the purposes of international law to one nation that holds their primary national allegiance, while any other nationalities are subordinate. The theory of dominant and effective nationality emerged as early as 1834. Customary international law and precedent have since recognized the idea of dominant and effective nationality, with the Notbaum case providing an important shift. 
The International Court of Justice defines effective nationality as a legal bond having as its basis a social fact of attachment, a genuine connection of existence, interests and sentiments, together with the existence of reciprocal rights and duties." International tribunals have adopted and used the principle. Under customary international law, tribunals dealing with questions involving dual nationality must determine the effective nationality of the dual national by determining to which nation the individual has more of a genuine link to. Unlike dual nationality, one may only be the effective national of a single nation, and different factors are taken into consideration to determine effective nationality, including habitual residence, family ties, the center of interests, referring mainly to financial interests and economic ties, participation in public life, and evidence of national allegiance. Topic. Dual citizenship by region Africa Some African countries restrict or forbid dual citizenship. It is allowed for example in Angola, Burundi, Comoros, Cabo Verde, Côte d'Ivoire, Djibouti, Gabon, Gambia, Ghana, Kenya, Mali, Morocco, Mozambique, Niger, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, São Tomé and Príncipe, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Tunisia, Uganda and Zambia. Eritreans, Egyptians, and South Africans wanting to take another citizenship need a permission to maintain their citizenship. Eritrea taxes its citizens worldwide, even if they have never lived in the country. Lesotho restricts dual citizenship, but observes jus soli. The Americas Most countries in the Americas allow dual citizenship, some only for citizens by descent or with other countries, usually also in the region, with which they have agreements. Some countries e Brazil, Bolivia, do not allow their citizens to renounce their citizenship, so they keep it even when naturalizing in a country that forbids dual citizenship. Most countries in the region observe unconditional jus soli, i.e. a child born there is regarded as a citizen even if the parents are not. Some countries the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Uruguay allow renunciation of citizenship only if it was involuntarily acquired by birth to non-citizen parents. Canada and the United States allow dual citizenship and are worldwide the only two developed economies to grant unconditional birthright citizenship. The United States taxes its citizens and non-citizen lawful permanent residents worldwide, even if they have never lived in the country. In 2014, the U.S. Department of State increased the fee for processing requests for renunciation of citizenship from $450 to $2,350. Dual citizenship is restricted or forbidden, for example, in Cuba, Haiti, and Suriname. Asia-Pacific Most countries in the Asia-Pacific region restrict or forbid dual citizenship. But in some of these countries e.g. Iran, North Korea, Thailand, it is very difficult or even impossible for citizens to renounce their citizenship, even when naturalizing in another country. Dual citizenship is allowed for example in Australia, Fiji, New Zealand, Philippines, Samoa, South Korea, Tonga, and Vanuatu. Cambodia allows dual citizenship and observes jus soli for children born to legal permanent residents born in Cambodia or to children whose parents are unknown. Hong Kong allows dual citizenship for citizens by birth but does not permit applicants for naturalization to retain their prior citizenship. However, there is not actually a Hong Kong citizenship. The Nationality Law of the People's Republic of China CNL has been applied in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region since 1 July 1997. Hong Kong residents who are Chinese citizens holding foreign passports must make a declaration of change of nationality to the HKSAR Immigration Department in order to be regarded as foreign nationals. Foreign nationals or stateless persons can apply for naturalization as a Chinese national provided that they are Hong Kong residents and meet the requirements under CNL. South Korea allows any foreign-born person meeting income, language, culture, and domicile conditions to become a naturalized citizen. 
It also allows foreign born nationals who married to a Korean citizen, Korean men holding dual citizenship by birth who served in the Republic of Korea Armed Forces as compulsory military service, Korean women with multiple nationalities by birth who has vowed her intention not to exercise her foreign nationality in the Republic of Korea by the age of 22 and overseas Koreans at least 65 years of age. Taiwan allows dual citizenship for citizens by birth or for its own citizen but do not permit foreign applicants for naturalization to retain their prior citizenship. Burmese nationality law forbids its citizens to have dual citizenship, and foreigners cannot become naturalized citizens, unless they can prove a close familial connection to the country. Pakistan restricts dual citizenship see above, but observes Zhu Soli. In Papua New Guinea there was overwhelming support from parliament to amend their constitution to allow dual citizenship, however the law had yet to come into force as of February 2014. In the Philippines, Republic Act No. 9225, approved 29 August 2003, provided that natural-born citizens of the Philippines who had lost their Philippine citizenship by reason of their naturalization as citizens of a foreign country would be deemed to have re-acquired Philippine citizenship upon taking an oath of allegiance to the Republic, that their children whether legitimate, illegitimate or adopted, below 18, 18 years of age, shall be deemed citizens of the Philippines, and that natural-born citizens of the Philippines Philippines who become citizens of a foreign country subsequent to its enactment would retain their Philippine citizenship upon taking the oath. Sri Lanka allows dual citizenship. However, under the 19th Amendment of that country's constitution, dual citizens are not allowed to hold public office. Lebanon allows dual citizenship. Israel allows dual citizenship except in the case of one being chosen as a member of the Knesset or appointed a government minister, in which case one must relinquish other citizenships when possible. Iraq allows dual citizenship. Syria allows dual citizenship. The Indian constitution does not allow voluntary dual citizenship. However, in response to persistent demands for dual citizenship, particularly from the diaspora in North America and other developed countries, the Overseas Citizenship of India scheme was introduced by amending the Citizenship Act, 1955 in August 2005. Europe EU and EFTA countries and microstates The EU and EFTA countries have various policies regarding dual citizenship, because each country can make its own laws. The only real rule is that a citizen of an EU country can live and work indefinitely in other EU countries and in the four EFTA countries and citizens of the EFTA countries can live and work indefinitely in the EU. However, the right to vote and work in certain sensitive fields such as government, police, military might in some cases be restricted to the local citizens only. The countries can exclude immigrants from getting welfare for a certain time period to avoid welfare tourism, and they can refuse welfare completely if the immigrants do not have a job after a certain period of time and do not try to get one. Immigrants convicted of welfare fraud can be deported and be refused the re-entry of the country. On September 15, 2015, the European Court of Justice ruled that EU countries can refuse to pay unemployment benefits to immigrants who have lost their job even if they are citizens of other EU countries. The judge stated that EU rules allow member states to refuse unemployment benefits to people from other EU nations to stop them becoming an unreasonable burden on the social assistance system of the host member state. This backs up a November 2014 ruling, in which the court ruled that Poverty immigrants, who came to Germany just to receive social security benefits, were not entitled to receive them. Within the EU, mandatory military service exists, at least in peacetime, only in Austria, Cyprus, Estonia, Finland, and Greece. In all countries but Cyprus, alternative service is available. Within the EFTA countries, only Switzerland requires it. Alternative service is available. Iceland and Liechtenstein have no armed forces. In Norway, military service is de jure mandatory, but the enforcement is limited, so some sources claim it is de facto voluntary. In Liechtenstein and in the Swiss canton of Schaffhausen, voting is compulsory for citizens. In the European Union, voting is mandatory for national citizens in Belgium compulsory for all citizens from age 18 to present themselves at a polling station. Legal sanctions exist, but only the sanctions for absent appointed polling station staff have been enforced by prosecutors since 2003. Cyprus 
Luxembourg compulsory for national citizens between the age of 18 and 75, voluntary for those over the age of 75 and for residing foreigners in local and EU elections only. In Bulgaria and Greece, voting is de jure compulsory, but is not enforced. The four microstates Andorra, Monaco, San Marino, and Vatican City are not EU or EFTA members. Between them, the EU, and the EFTA there is visa-free travel, but no agreements on immigration and access to the job markets. <inaudible> EU countries and microstates For details, see the nationality law of the country concerned and citizenship of the European Union. In Austria, dual citizenship is possible with special permission or if it was obtained at birth. Belgium allows dual citizenship. In Bulgaria, Bulgarian citizens of descent can have dual citizenship, but foreigners wanting to naturalize must renounce their old citizenship. Croatia generally allows citizens by descent to have dual citizenship and forbids it only in certain cases, but foreigners wanting to naturalize must renounce their old citizenship. Cyprus allows dual citizenship. Cyprus has been divided into a southern Greek and northern Turkish region since the Turkish invasion of northern Cyprus on 20 July 1974. Northern Cyprus is not generally recognized by the international community as a sovereign state. The United Nations considers the declaration of independence by northern Cyprus as legally invalid. The United Nations recognizes northern Cyprus as territory of the Republic of Cyprus under Turkish occupation. Turkey permits citizens of northern Cyprus to live and work in Turkey under the same requirements as Turkish citizens, and provides a special type of passport for northern Cyprus citizens. The Czech Republic has allowed multiple citizenship since January 1, 2014. Denmark allows dual citizenship since September 1, 2015. Note that not all Danish citizens are EU citizens see below. Estonia forbids dual citizenship, but citizens by descent cannot be deprived of their Estonian citizenship, so they de facto can have dual citizenship. Finland allows dual citizenship. France allows dual citizenship. Germany allows dual citizenship with other EU countries and Switzerland. Dual citizenship with other countries is possible with special permission or if obtained at birth. Children of non EU, non Swiss legal permanent residents can have dual citizenship if born and grown up in Germany. The parents born and grown up abroad must have resided in Germany for at least eight years and must have had the legal permanent resident status for at least three years, and usually cannot have dual citizenship themselves. Greece allows dual citizenship. Hungary allows dual citizenship, grants dual citizenship to people living in, and having ancestors in territories which were annexed from Hungary at the end of World War I, provided they can still speak Hungarian. Ireland allows and encourages dual citizenship, but a naturalised citizen can lose Irish citizenship again when naturalising in another country. Ireland was the last European country to abolish unconditional birthright citizenship in 2004 in order to stop birth tourism. And to replace it by a modified form, at least one parent must be a citizen or a legal permanent resident. Italy allows dual citizenship. In Latvia ever since October 1, 2013, dual citizenship has been allowed for citizens of member countries of EU, NATO and EFTA Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, Switzerland, citizens of Australia, Brazil, New Zealand, citizens of the counties that have mutual recognition of dual citizenship with Latvia, people who were granted the dual citizenship by the Cabinet of Ministers of Latvia, people who have applied for dual citizenship before the previous Latvian Citizenship Law 1995, ethnic Latvians or Livonians who registered Latvian citizenship can keep previous citizenships with any country. In Lithuania, Article 12 of the Lithuanian Constitution states that only in individual cases provided for by law is dual citizenship permitted. Constitution of the Republic of Lithuania, adopted on October 25, 1992, in force from November 2, 1992. Luxembourg allows dual citizenship. Malta allows dual citizenship. In the Netherlands, dual citizenship is allowed under certain conditions, e.g., foreign citizenship may be kept if obtained at birth or in the event of naturalization via marriage. Poland does not deal with the issue of dual citizenship, but possession of another citizenship is tolerated since there are no penalties for its possession alone. However, penalties do exist for exercising foreign citizenship, such as identifying oneself to Polish authorities using a foreign identification document. 
Dual citizens are usually not exempted from their duties as Polish citizens such as entering, leaving Poland using Polish passport or Polish ID card. Under some circumstances, ethnic Poles can apply for the Polish card. Carta Polaca, see below. Portugal allows dual citizenship. Romania allows dual citizenship. In Slovakia, dual citizenship is permitted to Slovak citizens who acquire a second citizenship by birth or through marriage, and to foreign nationals who apply for Slovak citizenship and meet the requirements of the Citizenship Act. Please note that after the Hungarian Slovak citizenship conflict year 2010, some restrictions to dual citizenship may apply. Slovenia generally allows citizens by descent to have dual citizenship and forbids it only in certain cases, but foreigners wanting to naturalize must renounce their old citizenship. In Spain, Spanish citizens by descent can have dual citizenship. Spanish laws recognize a dormant citizenship. For citizens naturalizing in Ibero-American countries, they do not lose their citizenship, but their status and their rights as citizens of Spain and of the EU are inactive until they move back to Spain. Foreigners wanting to naturalize in Spain must usually renounce their old citizenship. Exceptions are made for citizens of some Ibero-American countries, Puerto Rico, Andorra, the Philippines, Equatorial Guinea, and Portugal. Since 2014, Spain has granted Spanish nationality to Sephardi Jews regardless of nationality. Sweden allows dual citizenship. The United Kingdom allows dual citizenship. Note that not all British nationals are EU citizens see below. On June 23, 2016, British citizens voted to leave the European Union. The effect on British citizens' EU citizenship is yet to be formally negotiated, so it is unclear yet what the result will be. Some British nationals and Danish citizens not regarded as EU citizens The Channel Islands of Guernsey and Jersey and the Isle of Man are British Crown dependencies. Unlike the United Kingdom proper and Gibraltar a British overseas territory in Europe, the Crown dependencies are not considered part of the EU for most purposes. The Faroe Islands belong to Denmark, but not the EU, so their inhabitants are Danish citizens, but not EU citizens. Greenland left the EC in 1985, but Greenlanders are considered EU citizens. These British and Danish citizens obtain or procure local passports. In practice, citizens of Faroe Islands and Greenland can choose between local and European passports, and citizens of Guernsey, Jersey, and the Isle of Man receive passports bearing the title British Islands alongside the dependency's respective name. They can become full. EU citizens by moving to and living permanently in the United Kingdom or in Denmark, as the case may be. British citizens however bearing passports from the Crown dependencies, but having sufficient connections to the UK proper, or to Gibraltar, are considered EU citizens. In June 2016, the United Kingdom European Union membership referendum saw the UK vote to leave the European Union, and therefore its citizens may lose their EU citizen status in future. Although the exact changes have yet to be defined and negotiated, the four microstates surrounded by EU countries Andorra, Monaco, San Marino, and Vatican City, these four countries are not EU or EFTA members, and only Vatican City grants time limited dual citizenship. See above. Andorra, Monaco, and San Marino forbid it. In 2015, however, only 21.6% of the inhabitants of Monaco were citizens. See also Andorran Nationality Law and Monegasque Nationality Law. EFTA countries Iceland allows dual citizenship. See also Icelandic Nationality Law. Liechtenstein allows citizens by descent to have dual citizenship, but foreigners wanting to naturalize must renounce their old citizenship. Norway allows dual citizenship only in exceptional cases. A Norwegian citizen who voluntarily acquires another citizenship automatically loses Norwegian citizenship without notification, and foreigners wanting to naturalize must usually renounce their old citizenship. For details, see Norwegian Nationality Law, Dual Citizenship. Switzerland allows dual citizenship, but the conditions for the naturalization of foreigners vary from canton to canton. Male Swiss citizens under the age of 25, including male dual citizens, are required to perform military or civilian service women can do it voluntarily, and Swiss citizens men and women are not allowed to work for a foreign military. 
Foreign military service is a felony for Swiss citizens the Swiss guards of Vatican City are regarded as a «house police», not an army. In the canton of Schaffhausen, voting is compulsory. For more details, see Swiss Nationality Law and Schweizer Bürgerrecht in German. The Nordic Passport Union the Nordic Passport Union allows citizens of Denmark including the Faroe Islands, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Iceland to travel and reside in other Nordic countries without a passport or a residence permit. Norway restricts dual citizenship. The rest of Europe Albania, Belarus, Macedonia, Moldova, Russia and Serbia allow dual citizenship, but in Russia a second citizenship must be reported. Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Montenegro generally do not allow dual citizenship. Ukrainian law currently does not recognize dual citizenship, but there are citizens of Ukraine who hold dual citizenship. On February 8, 2014, the Rada proposed a bill to criminalize the act of holding two citizenships. See also Accidental American Canadians of convenience History of citizenship Immigration Nationality Nationality law Naturalization Talbot v. Janssen Tanais v. Moldova Third culture kid World citizenship Topic. References Topic. Further reading Thomas Feist, ed., August 2007. Dual Citizenship in Europe, From Nationhood to Societal Integration. Aldershot, UK, Ashgate. ISBN 978-0-7546-4914-4. Thomas Feist and Jürgen Jürds Dual Citizenship in an Age of Mobility", PDF. Transatlantic Council on Migration MPI. Retrieved 26 April 2012. Federal Investigative Services Division of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management 2001. Citizenship Laws of the World, a Directory", PDF. Archived from the original PDF on 4 April 2006. Retrieved 28 January 2008. Peter J. Spiro 2016. At Home in Two Countries, The Past and Future of Dual Citizenship. New York, NYU Press. ISBN 9780814785538. External links International Hague 1930 Convention Convention N8 on the Exchange of Information Concerning Acquisition of Nationality, 1964 Council of Europe Convention on the Reduction of Cases of Multiple Nationality and on Military Obligations in Cases of Multiple Nationality, 1963 European Convention on Nationality, 1997